Hello everyone, welcome to another spiffing episode of Techspert Weekly, the week where basically all of the goddamn tech launched. And yeah, I could do you a half assed intro to the show as usual, but frankly it would just be filling time that we don't really have anyway, and a large chunk of it would probably just be me in the corner sobbing uncontrollably. So let's don't and say we did, jingle me! Techspert Weekly! Now the tech tsunami kicked off on Monday with a trio of new Amaze Fit smartwatches. The GTR3 and the GTS3 both cost from €149, Euros, while the Billy Big Bollocks model, the GTR3 Pro, starts at €199 Euros if you're all rich and stuff. All three pieces of wrist furniture are water resistant and constructed from a tough aluminium alloy with a super bright OLED screen and the usual fitness tracking shenanigans, all running off the custom ZEP OS. The Pro model justifies that higher price by offering GPS and Wi-Fi support. You've got a built-in mic and speaker, independent music streaming, although if you want the best battery life of the bunch, well, that honor belongs to the standard GTR3. And I would have done you a full review of at least one of these smartwatches by now, except Funny story, right? DHL decided to trap my samples in customs hell for a full fortnight in a bid to snatch up even more duty fees with their greedy grasping claws. So the moral of the story is basically that DHL are c and f DHL, f them right in their <laughs> crevice. Anywho, that was probably more than enough launch action for a Monday, a day that is generally about as popular as a flatulent elephant at a Chinese buffet. But no, Oppo decided that us tech twats were going to properly work right through our weekend hangovers by revealing some juicy tidbits on ColorOS 12, which is set to hit 110 Oppo phone models in the coming months. That's right, 110 different Oppo smartphone models. Basically, Oppo spaffs out new smartphones like Boris-sized illegitimate children. Some of that hard-hitting political commentary for you there. Don't hit on me, it's been a very long week. Apparently, ColorOS 12 is faster and more power efficient than version 11, with an emphasis on retaining those key stock Android traits, but with the usual infinite design flair. It seems as if most of the usual ColorOS features will be back in action, along with some obligatory cartoon emoji bollocks that can basically get right in the sea. And apparently, the first phone to get ColorOS 12 will be the Fine X3 Pro flagship smartphone, no massive surprise there. That should be hitting this December, followed by the X3 Lite and the Neo, and the X2 phones, and a whole bunch of other Oppo blows in early 2022. And you can head on over to Oppo's website for full details on all that shenanigans. After Monday, somewhat inevitably came Tuesday, bringing with it a fresh blow from Infinix, the absolutely effing enormous Note 11 Pro. Built as a budget gaming phone, this near 7-inch handset sports a 120Hz screen and can certainly blaze through a bit of Call of Duty Mobile, even if the performance hasn't really advanced at all since the previous generation. You even get a telephoto lens chucked on this thing for shits and giggles. And if you have a sudden burning desire to see somebody take that Infinix Note 11 Pro out of a very bright green box and get virtually brained from 100 yards over and over and over again, then good news! I've done exactly that just for you. Hip hip hooray. Ah, tits. And because apparently we can't just have a single launch on any given day anymore, Tuesday also saw tiles spaff out a fresh range of Bluetooth trackers. Handy if you're always leaving your bag in the bogs of your local watering hole or some thieving get has away with your gear. The Mate Slim and Sticker models now feature a proper bloody loud siren and a longer 250 foot range, while the Pro model can be pinged from up to 400 foot and is even more proper bloody loud. All four are IP68 water resistant now, and all except the sticker have a QR code stamped on them which can be scanned for owner details if found by some good Samaritan. And the new Tile Ultra model is apparently coming in early 2022 using ultra wideband tech as well as Bluetooth for a proper bit of precision. Now on Wednesday, I was starting to seriously consider fetching down the noose, but no time at all because Mobvoi has unveiled its latest smartwatch, the slightly awkwardly titled TicWatch Pro 3 Ultra GPS. 290 quid bags you a Wear OS watch with not one but two displays, a sexy bit of Snapdragon Wear 4100 Plus chipset action, and a mental fatigue feature that can tell you approximately how bollocks your brain is because people won't stop launching tech in all the same goddamn week. It's fine, it's fine, it's okay, you're fine, you just need to breathe. Breathe. F*** it, where's the whiskey? On Thursday, I basically woke up in a pool of my own drool, mucus, and a cocktail of various other pleasant bodily fluids, and just about managed to claw my trembling frame up off the floor in time for HTC to spunk out some rather nifty new VR glasses known as the Vive Floor. I've had the chance to... Oh, God, sorry. That, that whiskey is repeating on me. 
I've had the chance to stuff my facial region into those goggles and enjoy a variety of virtual experiences, all of which were at least 400% more enjoyable than reality, even the one where pirates violently attempt to blast your head into mush with cannonballs. The Vive Flow does need an external power supply, but boasts crisp visuals and a comfy design, while streaming a variety of content from your Android phone. You've even got some soothing, meditation-y shenanigans that's actually rather lovely, almost as good as smoking a whole bunch of crack. And now it's Friday and the week is basically done, or at the very least I'm done, uh, but that does unfortunately mean that now it is time for the part of the show that will actually have me fetching down the noose. It is viewer comments. Do, 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 do. Viewer comments. <laughs> So the hot topic uh, last week was, of course, the Google Pixel 6 and Pixel 6 Pro, which are set to launch imminently. Uh, plenty of correspondence on those new Google blowers. So Tony says, haven't been this hyped for a phone in a long time. Uh, lots of other love for it as well. Uh, Mark, though, says, deal breaker for me will be if Google sticks with the underglass speaker, which, uh, yeah, agrees. Definitely hoping that's one fad that's uh, that's dead just as fast as it, it came along, basically. So I think that Huawei was the, the first one to do that with, oh, this is this is gonna take me back now, P30 Pro, I think it was, the first one to do that. Yeah, just just, just not a good, not a good plan. Uh, on another tech note, uh, Matthew says, Wackadee was shit, Tiz was, is still the king. Yeah, sadly, Tiz was was uh, before my time, so I think that was 70s, wasn't it? Sort of mid to late 70s, uh, and I, I was an 80s child. Um, but I mean, the 80s, God damn, it's just so much good kids TV, and good TV in general, like Knight Rider, I used to love that show. Uh, I, in fact, I need to hunt down, uh, that's, that's got to be on one of the streaming services, right? Such an immensely entertaining show, I'm, I'm sure it's aged rather badly, but uh, apparently the special effects are especially terrible. If you get the HD remaster, you can quite clearly see the guy who's like basically sewn into the car suit doing the driving, when it's supposed to be just kit driving by itself. And the budget must have run a little bit dry for the later seasons, because apparently it gets even worse as well. There's one... Uh, scene in one of the later episodes where Kit jumps over a canyon uh, soaring through the air majestically but actually when you watch it on an HD telly it's quite clear that someone's just gotten a Hot Wheels and just chucked it across the room in front of the camera. Uh, Ian Livingston says, uh, off to get one of your novels now. Um, thanks and apologies in advance, buddy. Sadly, I don't think it's the Ian Livingston of Choose Your Own Adventure book fame, uh, which I used to absolutely love those back in the day. It was Ian Livingston and Steve Jackson, was it? The other guy who used to do them. Do you take the left door or the right door? Uh, I'll take the left door, I guess. Oh no, bad choice. You get ass raped by the Senator of Doom. But of course, you'd always have your thumb in the previous page, so you'd say, eh, just go back and maybe choose the right door instead rather than like starting all over again. Uh, Steve's in on the books as well. He says, just grabbed Devils in a Different Dress. Hope it's as funny as you. Uh, it's most definitely not a comedy, mate. Uh, yeah, if you've gone in into that one expecting a couple of giggles, then you'll probably be quite disappointed slash appalled. Now, I've, done, I've done a couple of sort of more lighthearted ones, but that one's definitely a full-on bleak wartime murder thriller drama type thing. I tell you, quite a lot of my books that I wrote back in the day are sort of the dark, grimy sort of crime efforts. Not really sure why, but he says a lot more about my subconscious than anything else. <laughs> like a bit of football, I was wondering when we get onto this topic. A well-informed Pitchfork says, Sunderland crawling out of their way of League One. Mackhams are so optimistic, I guess they'd have to be, otherwise they'd all commit suicide. Yeah, I mean, why do you think we start heavily drinking at like 7 a.m. on a match day, you know? Oh, bloody football, man. Uh, Barbara says, keep the faith, the Black Cats will claw their way to the heady heights of the championship this season. Now, it was looking pretty rosy until uh, Portsmouth obviously took a big steam and dump on us from up on high and did us 4-0. Uh, just, once again, just reality smashing you in the crotch with a concrete cricket bat. Uh, Ray says, my parents are Geordies, which is why I'm a Sunderland fan. Jesus Christ, mate, was, was that some sort of proper full-on form of childhood rebellion? I mean, that must have made for some really awkward dinner time conversations. I'm surprised you weren't disowned, to be perfectly honest, because obviously people take football pretty seriously in the Northeast. But yeah, I mean, kudos, man. That, you know, the, I think the most rebellious thing I did as a kid was probably put my jumper on backwards one time. Yeah, I did what you told me to, Mum, but not exactly the way you wanted me to do it. F*** the system. Yeah, there is actually a lot of uh, Sunderland chat this week, uh, which, you know, apologies to the 99.9% uh, .9 of you who don't give a flying shit about Sunderland or until now didn't even realise it existed. And of course, apologies as always to those of you who started streaming what bills itself as a tech news show, expecting some sort of chat about tech. Uh, Richard says, how many pointless John's trophies will the Mackhams win by the time Newcastle's new owners have bought them the Premier League? Yeah, I mean, quite a few of my Geordie mates are very confident that they'll be top of the league within a season or so, uh, but a lot of them still believe that Newcastle was a top four club even when they spent several seasons fighting relegation, so there you go. Personally, I blame Newcastle Brown Ale. That stuff really f 
fucks with your head. Uh, Genius has thoughts on the 320 billion takeover of Newcastle. I mean, the problem is that whatever I say will basically sound like sour grapes, but personally, I'd you know much rather that Sunderland manage to get back into the Premier League by you know a wise investment in talent in the academy, you know, a bit of homegrown action uh, as much as possible, and then obviously filling in the gaps with some uh, some really smart wise transfer moves as well rather than just simply hoying a whole bunch of dodgy money at the problem and hoping that uh, you know gets you back up there and then of course there's the whole human rights issue but uh that's probably enough football chat for now a tech anorak says love how you bleeped all of the swear words but then left in a nice twat at the end well some would probably say there's a nice twat not just at the end but all through the episode bum and indeed tish I've got to admit, it does give me some cause for consternation in pretty much every bloody episode of this that I do, like which swear words to bleep and which ones to actually leave in. So obviously you've got f and sh and c**t, which I just standard just straight out bleep those out. But then you've got the likes of twat, wanker, tosser, tits. Good bit of bollocks, of course, love the bollocks. Uh, and of course, most of them are just British colloquialisms. I don't think anyone here would get particularly offended by them, and in most other parts of the world might not even know what they mean. Like some uh, some Americans, certainly a few years ago, certainly didn't seem to know what wanker meant, because I, I vividly remember a, a guy calling a woman a wanker on daytime TV in like a soap or something. It was like, whoa, okay. Although they do also say funny a lot out there, but that just means bum. I'm not really sure why I even bother to bleep anything out, to be honest, because it's not like every single six-year-old in the country doesn't already know all these bad words anyway. I mean, I've been called a f by a primary school kid before. Little bastards. Uh, next up, Richard says, Hooper drives the boat, chief. Has always been good advice. Agreed. And I need to see that film again, man. It's been too long. Eric says, Anything involving James Corden sounds like a nightmare to me. Uh, yep, seconded. Unless it's actually just James Corden being fired into the sun in a giant rocket filled with angry wasps. That is the one James Corden Teddy special I would actually tune into. Uh, Maxine says, Thanks to your Poco F3 review. We've actually got a tech uh, comment slash question here. Uh, I now own two of them. Both me and my lovely lass enjoy them. Just wish the rubber Johnny case wasn't so awful. Yeah, I mean, it does uh, it does always somewhat ruin the aesthetics of your lovely new smart form. You just wrap it in latex, basically. But better safe than sorry. That's what my mum used to say while staring at me with a grim, haggard expression. Uh, and I've got boxes of tech that uh, either just launched or about to launch that needs uh, covering. So I better make this the last comment and then bugger off and do some actual proper work. Uh, so Slaphead says, uh, can't we just dig up Sean Connery? He's still better than the last three Bonds. Hang on, is, is Connery is Connery dead? Did I just completely miss this news in the garbage fire that modern existence has basically become? I'm going to have to look this up now. Uh, Sean Connery. Come on, lad, you're still alive, aren't you? And I died 31st of October 2020. Piss. Oh man, ending the episode on a proper downer. Um, but I mean, to be fair though, I did like Dalton. I thought he was good. Everyone gave him for those films being far too violent. Uh, but I, that was all, like, especially after the cheesy, slightly corny Roger Moore era. Not the best. And then all of a sudden you've got uh, your scenes in a James Bond film where someone gets locked in an airlock and explodes like a melon in a microwave. It was absolutely wild. So anyway, yeah, really got to end it there, unfortunately, despite it being a bit of a bit of a downer. Thanks, Slaphead. Uh, but thank you very much to everyone who commented last week. Fantastic reading your comments as always. Please do slap some more comments, questions, whatever, down below, and we'll try and barrel our way through as many of those as possible next week. And speaking of next week, you know what's coming next week, next week, what the f*** is next week? Uh, next week is of course the big pixel 6 and pixel 6 pro launch event that is coming on the tuesday 6 p.m is when uh, that will kicks off uk time um so yeah so look forward to that that's the only big one that i've got in the uh, the old calendar for next week apart from a christmas quiz as well it's the, the first of the christmas events next week not even halloween yet but hey it's an actual physical event at a physical bar with physical booze rather than a virtual microsoft teams a bit of bullshit so I, I will take it in spades. So yeah, but uh, I'm sure there'll be other stuff going on that I've simply forgotten about or haven't bothered to put in the in the calendar. So definitely join me uh, same time next week, noon on a Friday for Textbird Weekly once again. There'll be joy, there'll be fun, there'll be laughter in the sun. So which random song is that, I guess? Probably something from like Russ Abbott from back in the day. Um, there won't actually be any of that. There certainly won't be any sun because it's, it's the UK in October. Come on, guys. It'll hopefully be me slightly less tired and slightly less sweary because I can already tell this this edit is going to take me a while with all the goddamn bleeps I'm going to have to stick in there. Anyway, I'm not really sure why I'm still standing here banging on. Thank you, thank you, thank you to uh, everyone who's watched this drivel to the end. As always, please do join me next week. Have yourselves a fantastic uh, weekend. Uh, or plug subscribe, ding that notifications bell. Can't forget to say that. And uh, yeah, that's it. Love you. Bye. 